So a lot of you have asked me how Sorcerer is actually holding up in Season 1, now that we've been, let's be honest, going crazy on it. Well, to skip ahead a little bit... In conclusion... But there's more nuance to it than that, and there's a lot more going on, too. We'll talk in a little bit about the now officially promised Sorcerer buffs that are coming in two weeks that I am very cautiously optimistic about, let's say, and what they could mean and what might get changed, because we do have a actual bit of information to extrapolate from. But initially, then, how are things? progressing. But before we continue, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Signal RGB. They have teamed up with Intel and Skytech Gaming to bring you this masterpiece. A full-on treasure chest, a custom PC the Skytech team designed and 3D printed with both performance and cooling in mind. With reactive health and mana potions that represent your actual health and mana or your resource in Diablo 4, and it goes up and down as it does in-game. The Signal RGB app lets it sync any RGB devices to, well, whatever you want it to, to give you a proper lighting experience. The whole rig has been hand-painted, and hardware-wise, you're talking about an Intel 13600K and an RTX 470, which is more than enough power to do everything you could ever need to do in Sanctuary. And the best part of all of this is it's being given away, so you, yes, you, could win it if you enter by simply clicking the link down in the description below. That all said then, let's get on with the show. Well, ultimately, despite the doom and gloom and the utter just murdering of this class that happened in the pre-season 1.1 patch, the actual leveling has remained pleasant and easy and fun. And that's because Sorcerer in the low levels is just an absolute master of leveling. In fact, if you're doing content that is your level, Sorcerer is probably still the champion of just general open world content. You know, handling hell tides, unlocking a random aspect in a dungeon that's your level, doing that kind of stuff, clearing malignant tunnels. And that's kind of proven by the fact that, well, the race to level 100, while uh, won by a necromancer, who are not just better sorcerers that throw bones. They are not just better sorcerers that throw bones. They are not. <laughs> anyway, I love necromancers. Cool. And that's quite interesting to see a stark turnaround from their poor performance early in the preseason. But not long after, hot on the heels of the Necro, is a group of sorcerers, making them actually the largest class represented at level 100 currently with said four. There is a couple of druids, a couple of necros, a couple of rogues, and no barbarians, sadly. So that's very interesting and neat to see. And proves that when it comes to just general day-to-day -day gameplay, maintenance, character stuff, yeah, we're fine. Though it is clear we're still weaker than our peers, except barbarian. I don't see them enough to compare, but when it comes to Necro, Rogue, and Druid, yeah, they are handling things much easier on every level by a long way than the Sorcerers. I am in Torment now, I unlocked it at level 54 with a build that I am really ridiculously proud of. It combines a lot of new Season 1 shenanigans with some cool concepts I've been wanting to make work for a while now, and it's one I'll be presenting to you guys, I think actually tomorrow, so look forward to that, slash I hope you enjoy it. It really is kind of a cheat code, if I'm honest with you. 
But that aside, as you know, on uh, this channel, we are a team. There is Hollow, who is Necromancer, and there is Cotton, who is Druid. And both of them have just been having such a merrier time pushing Nightmare Dungeons already. They also did the capstone at really low level, but they barely had to think about it or work for it. The druids just there tanking uh, the final boss's mechanics, getting hit multiple times and not dying. Whereas over here on Sorcerer, one mistake was still death. And yes, that underleveled is kind of what you expect, but the difference is Stark, and that's only going to get exponentially worse as we get deeper into Torment and the proper end game. Now, the nerf to Nightmare Dungeons is, of course, helpful, but you know, that equally helps everyone, so it's not exactly a special relief there for sorcerers. We are still definitely going to find ourselves being constantly one-shot out of nowhere, and it is going to be a shame that hopefully it will get addressed in the coming patch that supposedly is going to retool a lot of what we have to work with and make that a lot better. Our damage output is still also quite low, at least compared to the other classes, though definitely competitive enough to blasts through the things that we need to outside of hard pushing. I am a little bit sad that the Malignant Hearts don't really enable any, like, completely new builds. They've made some existing ones a lot better, and they've let a few tweaks happen, but nothing completely uh, changing or revolutionary is emerging. I still want to get my hands on Omnipower and have a play around, because that is the one may hope, and honestly, that is the Malignant Heart that made me still really determined to play Sorcerer. Because you might be asking, well, why are you even playing Sorcerer? Sorcerer in Season 1 after everything. Well, outside of maybe some, you know, low-key masochism, apparently, I just, I really do love the class. I love spells in RPG. I love flashy effects and elemental shenanigans. It just speaks to me. And I also kind of like being the underdog class and still figuring out a way to make it shine and then sharing that with you all. I uh, think it's really cool, and every one of you that is also stuck with Sorcerer, I really really, you know, want to be there as the best ally I can be in making that not a bad decision. Hopefully, as I say, when we get our buffs in two weeks, then we will all be vindicated either way, but forever I will be here doing what I can. So ultimately, it's sort of hard to tell the blurry line between everyone is weaker because of the affix nerfs, because we're lower level without perfect gear, because the game is easier at lower level and lower tiers, and then just Sorceress specifically being weaker than everything else. We definitely are the 4th or 5th worst class, there is no denying that on a statistical level. I still maintain the best class on a FUN level. Probably, right? Yeah, come on. Yeah, fellow sorcerers. Yeah! But I will fully admit that at least so far, things are better and more fun than I was expecting. While they don't enable any completely new builds, the hearts that Sorcerer can play with, and a certain few of the neutral ones, have really done a lot for us. Revenge being the prime example, and basically if this heart didn't exist, things would be so much worse. By itself, coupled with uh, the natural armor to make up for the loss of skulls that hearts give, we actually kind of end up in the same level of squishy we were before patch 1.1, which is to say laughably too squishy, but not kind of extra, at least not more than anyone else's now. We still will die the most, but we can actually survive a couple things, and against stuff your level, you do feel weirdly tanky for this class, at least in my experience up to early torment at level 60-ish or so now. We also, yes, have Creeping Death, which has enabled uh, dot builds to rise and shine. They're still not tippy-top meta, but Firewall with it becomes incredible for leveling from sort of level 15 to level 50. Past that, you can do a few other neat, interesting things. Yes, Omni Power still uh, needs to get properly tested. That one is properly exciting, and I uh, do think that's kind of the word, right? That is exciting, and I'm genuinely saying that, and I didn't expect to be saying that after how sad and disappointed I felt after patch 1.1. 1 
I still think that there was a lot of mistakes made, but I can't deny uh, the at least little bit of genuineness that was felt from the campfire chat and what they said, and while a cynical part of me does sort of think it was all planned out, and while the cynical side of me thinks it's, uh, it's a little bit just damage control more than anything, Hell, it's better having some damage control than just nothing. Deal with it, guys. Sorry, you're all weaker now. Ha ha. That's uh, certainly uh, something uh, to... Uh, that in itself is certainly true. And if they do deliver with everything that they said, well, we are going to end up in a good place. And that really is uh, something that remains to be seen. Bottom line, then, I'm having fun in Season 1. And it's not despite playing Sorcerer. It's also not because of playing Sorcerer. It's kind of just a middle ground of, yeah, you know, ARPGs are addicting and we're getting on with it. But I really didn't expect to even be at that level. There's still so many fundamental issues. Needing a third enchantment slot. Resistance is not working. Anything that costs mana basically being unusable for most of your game experience until ultra late game. All of uh, the squishiness problems that sorcerers are faced with, there is just a lot of concerns. And cooldown reduction is something I want to specifically touch on before I move on to what we can expect next week, because it sucks does the nerf to cooldown reduction. You can feel it. Even at the stage I'm at, where you can't get a lot of it yet as you're replacing gear too quickly as you level, but the amount of waiting for your defensives, of which we still need all of them, because yes, build dive Diversity for Sorcerer is still a big problem. Oh, it's just really slowed down the class and the rapid pressing of everything was at least one of the really fun parts of playing it. There is just so many cracks in the core design of this class that do need a tune-up and I won't go into it because I've gone into it for like 50 minutes worth of discussion now over the last couple weeks, but that's still there. So, let's look to the future, then, with what is coming. So, it would seem, then, that the goal is to fix Sorcerer by adjusting their uniques and legendary aspects. And that's really curious to me, because uh, it doesn't address, well, again, all of those fundamental core issues uh, that the class has, but it does address one of them, which is the lackluster uniques compared to all the other classes. And if we can get things not having such a penalty for using them, not having to pay such a big damage premium to have Fireball Bounce, not having such low chances for the Crackling Energy Nova, not having uh, such a joke of a skill in Incinerate to base a unique off to begin with, making it essentially worthless. I don't know how they fix Incinerate by changing Flame Scar if they do, but you can't make a unique on a move that is the worst move the class has, making a Lamesson actually worthwhile. Just drop the less damage. A unique should be an entirely good thing. If you actually make and buff this, Charged Bolts is a build. If you actually uh, change and buff this along with this, Fireball is a build. If you change this, you could have a pure Crackling Energy build. You buff Incinerate with this, you have an actual Incinerate build. There is a lot of good things that can happen with Sorcerer Uniques, so if that happens, I'll be very, very happy and indeed impressed. The same with the aspects. There are a lot that are just and nobody really cares about them. Obviously, not all of them are in the codex, but there is so many aspects that affect things like Incinerate or things like Charge Bolts, and because the base moves and the uniques tied to them are so weak, they might as well not exist. You also have some really weird, pointless aspects, like get movement speed when you pick up Crackling Energy. Yes, that can technically tie in to your Esu's heirlooms and give you a bit 
more crit chance, but are you really going to waste an aspect slot on that when there are the few good ones to actually play with? That's just not going to happen. Things like unstable currents actually triggering a skill while it's not active. This is so much fun and a really good aspect, and I've tried to make it work, and I have a little bit, but if this got a decent bump, suddenly you could play unstable currents in a way where you don't actually want to reduce the cooldown of it. You can play into the cooldown reduction nerf, you can let it sit on cooldown for 70 seconds, and have a good chance at con constantly just casting everything. It'd be less loaded burst, but much higher damage over the period of time. This is a really high potential aspect that's just let down by it having such a tame low percentage on it. It could be so much more creative, or at the very least, just double the chance. Then we'd look at something actually a little bit special there. Or this for Chain Lightning. A chance? to bounce two additional times? Would this really be so broken if it was Chain Lightning will now bounce two to five additional times and that two to five is the legendary roll? Not a percent to bounce, just guarantees bounces more, but how much more is the RNG of the drop? Suddenly, you can play Chain Lightning. I mean, it wouldn't entirely fix it, they over-nerfed it based on being level 25 and a beta, I will never stop pointing that out, but at the same time, it makes it a lot more palatable. The same with the aspect that makes Chain Lightning restore mana when it bounces off you. That either needs to restore a bit of mana every bounce, or a bit of mana per elite and you, or just a lot more with you, and then you can actually play Chain Lightning with a decent supply of mana along with the extra bouncing. Or something like this for Deep Freeze. It's a defensive aspect that means while you're invulnerable to damage, you will slowly heal up. Well, not slowly, but still, what's the point? In the duration of Deep Freeze, you will get full mana back, and you can drink potions while in the Ice Block. So this is just a wasted aspect that makes no sense that it even exists. Yes, you could say it's some burst quick healing, you could exit the Deep Freeze early, but that's so niche. This could be reworked into something actually, you know, worth considering, or just entirely replaced by something a lot better, which is probably the better option, because reworking it would be a little bit tough given the parameters of it. And something like this. This one's actually a good aspect. 10% duration loss is worth a second Hydra. It's just Hydra, again, was another casualty of the beta, got over-nerfed, and just really isn't usable. Conjuration in general, buffing the lightning spear aspect to be 50% is a start, but we really could do with, you know, an aspect that helps Ice Blades, that would be nice, and just a general damage bump to Hydra, and then we can start looking at some sort of conjuration setup. There's a few niche ones out there that kind of work, but by and large, it's just not functional. So yeah, there is a lot of unexplored design space in the Sorcerer aspects, and generally, uh, the main three things I want to see are the uniques made build defining like they should be, defensive aspects being actually powerful and worth using, and finally, the aspects that are actually decent, but they're just based on a skill that's terrible, like Hydra, like Incinerate, like Charged Bolts, get a buff to the skill that they're based on, so then the aspects become worth using. That's sort of the trifecta of what we need, because the good builds like Ice Shards, like Arclash, have good aspects, but the other builds need that extra little bit of help, as do the defensive aspects in general, because as of right now, our best defensive aspect is Disobedience which is just a general defensive aspect, even nerfs disobedience, and that's kind of a shame. You'd really think we would have some kind of sorcerer-specific aspect that only we have that kind of helps us stay alive in some cool elementally-themed way, god forbid. So, that's essentially where we're at then. A little bit of a look review at Sorcerer Season 1 so far. Better than I expected, but still, you know, worse than three other classes by a good margin, and that's definitely saddening to both know and say. 
I am definitely finding fun. I'm still excited to come up with builds because I just I live and breathe that. I can't get enough of it. I love theory crafting in any game I ever play, and that carries a lot for me in everything. But I still want to see some fundamental issues with the class addressed, and a rework of the very problematic uniques and aspects is definitely a decent route to do that for a start. So, yeah, hopeful, and, well, we'll see if that hope is rewarded, or if I'm sent even deeper and darker into the why must this happen to my favorite class pit of despair. Let me know how you guys are finding it then so far. Like if you have enjoyed this little talk, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a god Bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye